she would say the love that all mothers have had for their kids since the beginning of time, all human history, if you could take that love, all of it, and put and distill it down into uh, into a bottle, essentially, and then drink that, she says it would be it would pale in comparison to the love that she experienced in this place. That's, That's wild. Welcome to Prioritize Your Life at PrioritizeYourLife.com. Very excited today to have Stephen Gray with us, who is a director of a feature film that is in the theaters right now called After Death. Who can't be mystified by that question? What happens after you die? This really does show that there is life after death. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me. Yeah. And I'd be curious to find out maybe kind of where the inception of After Death came from, if it was your own fascination with these kind of stories. For me personally, I was thrown into like near-death experiences. I'm one of those people that I'll just look at the stars and I'm just like, there has to be something there. Like, holy cow, this is beautiful. But I wouldn't say that I had like any really firm foundational, like really something inside that I like. I know that there is life to come. And then this whole channel happened and I was really led to interview my neighbor. And then it becomes one of the most viewed near-death experiences of all time. And that has really thrown me into this world where my perception and my feelings are very different now. I'm on the far other side of like, you want to talk about life after death? Uh, yeah, it's a thing. Man, I loved your film. I teared up at least two or three times. Um, wow. So I think if you can reach people in that way, you're doing something important and meaningful. So thank you for that. It's really cool hearing how you got into it with you know interviewing your neighbor. Yeah. Um, so for, for me, uh, it, the whole kind of thing was born out of law. So kind of similar to you, I would say in terms of like, um, in the, in the beginning, like when I was, when I was younger and all that. Uh, so I grew up actually going to church. Uh, and so I, I was raised, you know, in a Christian home and, and, and was raised, you know, to believe that there's something after that we do believe that there's heaven. Um, but in 2012, my, uh, my brother-in-law who was 36 at the time, uh, he was killed in a car wreck. And so, uh, for me, um, I guess that that question of you know is there something after was just you know immediate and and I I needed to know you know is like where is he so it's like I know I was raised to believe this thing but um, I, I guess I realized how shallow my faith was because yeah. um, it was I just honestly it was like the quickest thing to just like let go at that time because it didn't make any sense in my life to to have to have such kind of chaos. Um, and and there to be like a loving uh, creator uh, just didn't it just didn't make any sense to me. So, um, but then eventually uh, there were some people around us that were that were you know telling us that you gotta you gotta listen to these people's stories. You gotta read these books. I think it'll be helpful for you. Um, my mother in law was the first to kind of get into it and, and read them, and, and it was helpful for her. I just I I still just wasn't sure, so I didn't initially read the books that were suggested for me to read, but. It was actually uh, someone got a, a CD for me, which <laughs> kind of talks about how like, old I am. But it was an <laughs> old, how long ago this was. But it's like it was a CD, uh, an audio interviews of of people who've had these near death experiences. And I can't remember if it was called near death experiences, but it was just it was like people who died. And I'm like, people who died don't don't come back. Like, what are you talking about? And so I threw it on, and and I was just, I mean, it caught my interest. And um, and it was the first person who came on was like. It was this like 40 minute conversation or something with this guy it was this doctor who fell out of two story building and he landed on a sidewalk and like basically like split open his head. And and then he had this profound experience, you know, of seeing his body and then seeing angels and he was brought up to heaven and having this conversation with Jesus. And and then he's talking about like this physical form that he had that was made of light. And I was just like, what on earth is this doctor doing talking about this? But there was something so sincere in his voice so real i mean i as a filmmaker and doing lots of interviews with people um you know more in the commercial space you kind of can pick up on if someone has some lines and if they're just saying something or if it's just a sound bite for sure and you can kind of you can kind of understand you know through lots of getting to know people over the years um if something is real 
or or if they actually mean this and i was i was picking up on that in this voice and that just didn't make it just didn't make a lot of sense to me that like how could this be and so but it piqued my interest and um and so then i started to read these books and after something like 30 books um of people who've had these near death experiences i was just like i mean how how is it that i was unaware of this and how, and um and so because of you know i'm more visual oriented i, I wanted to wanted to know you know it, are there films out there on, on this and i wasn't really there were there were a few and i was kind of getting uh, copies of some really old like 70s and 80s um uh documentaries and films even that came out on this topic but there wasn't a lot to me that was like really speaking to me yeah uh, in the same way that this audio interview had i mean i i'm so compelled by these stories it's it's like transforming my life it brought me back to a faith that i was just like or it got me close i was like i i feel like i can believe in in this it was the audio interviews that 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 did the most to be honest yeah. with you and i think again it was just the sincerity of the voice yeah um the books i just i know i guess as a as again as a filmmaker editing um like there's things that could be moved and and removed and all that kind of stuff to, to make you feel something and and i and i just kind of had this skepticism with books that it's just so beautifully told and it was emotional but i was just like but how much is kind of um, I don't know, like made up to be bigger than it is or whatever. I just wasn't totally. sure, you know, from that perspective, like how much, but it was the audio interview that was just like this. I mean, this guy is just telling it as it happened and it's just the most, you know, interesting thing. Um, so then, yeah, when I actually started to uh, reach out to some of these people, one of the first people was, uh, was actually John Burke who wrote the book, Imagine Heaven. I was, I was going to reach out to a bunch of these uh, people who wrote these books and then, and then I'd heard of Imagine Heaven and I was like, okay, like, you know, this plan that I had for potentially like reaching out and like putting together some of these stories, this guy did this in this book, Imagine Heaven, John Burke. And um, he did such a beautiful job of like, you know, he was looking at a thousand years of experiences and focusing narrowly on a hundred and comparing it and, and the overlapping nature of some of these experiences, as well as like, how does that and, and does it um, correlate to the Bible at all? Mm -hmm. And um I wasn't finding anyone else at that time. I didn't really find anyone else that was really kind of doing that. And that, there was something that I was interested to do in in this film initially. So I reached out to him, and he kind of graciously was uh, gave me his time and was like, you know, I'm if yeah, if if you, I was telling him like, this is a story I want to tell, and here's here's how I'm imagining it kind of going together. But I've never done a feature before. This is this is this was would was gonna be my first feature. Yeah. Um, but coming from the commercial space, it was like, I mean, I've told stories before. I've just never done it in a long with a bunch of different stories all together. And um, yeah, he was gracious to kind of like be like, I'm I'll make myself available as needed, um, if you want me involved. But he connected me with a few people who, you know, when I hopped on hopped on the a call with them, hearing their stories. You know, even just on like a, a remote call initially was just like, okay, I'm 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 getting the same thing that I did with that audio interview. I mean, yeah. these people, there's just something so different about them, um, and I wasn't getting that like that. I I, I don't know. It was like I don't I don't think I'm being conned here. This seems to be real, mm -hmm. but we entered this film like from a feature standpoint with a heavy amount of skepticism. And we kind of kept that throughout the course of making the film intentionally because we want to make a film that's like accessible for someone who's skeptic, who's a skeptic, as well as someone who, you know, believes. And although years into the making of this film, I, I became convinced this is real. Um, you know, these people aren't making this up. There's like actually no reason to uh, to make this up. Like it kind of almost in some cases, um, they have something to lose in, in telling their story. Um, but we went into it skept skeptical uh, on purpose because basically I was kind of like, even though I became convinced, I tried to make the film coming at it from a place where I was in the beginning. And I wanted people to experience what I experienced in the beginning of when I came across these stories. And so that was kind of the intention of the film. I love that. I think it's amazing these people have had this experience um, that, that, you know, that they share that experience. You know, I, not, not everyone, I think, is uh, maybe bold enough to kind of, you know, share that with others. Yeah. Um, but because, you know, they're talking about things that we can't, you know, we can't send in cameras to and <laughs> go and explore. What I experienced with the audio tape 
uh, was what I was experiencing in the interview chair across sitting from these people. And uh, I was so moved by, you know, what they're describing. And the, the interesting thing for me, I'm sure, which you've experienced, you know, having interviewed so many different people who've had these experiences, um, is that there's there are these commonalities. And these people don't know each other at all. You know, and yeah. they come from such different backgrounds, um, which I think was the most interesting thing for me. Um, in the film, I think we have something around 14 people that we interviewed that had clinically died between seconds to an hour and 45 minutes is the longest that we have in the film for like how long they had no heartbeat and no brain activity. Um, but, you know, these people are all and, and some of them are coming from non-Western countries. You know, Steve King in the film, he was born and raised in South Korea. Um, yeah. And when at the time that he was uh, raised there, it, they didn't have television screens in homes. They didn't have there's no movie theaters available or accessible. There's no movies playing. Um, there's no street preachers if, if there was like a, in terms of like Christian influence um, that would be like uh, thought as an, an invasion. Um, uh, there was no Western uh, philosophy or, or ideology or anything that was going to be permeating into the culture there. So um, there's no access to Bibles or anything like that. So Steve yeah. had no um, access to that. And he was raised in a culture and kind of by default Buddhist uh, religion. Uh, so different than you know the the maybe American t traditional kind of like maybe culture. In his near to near to the experience, he would say that he stepped into what he would call eternity, which is outside of time. It's not that time stops; it's just a totally different dimension of time. Um, anyway, so I found that interesting because it's like what he was describing and the stuff that he was describing and the way he experienced it, it was very much the same as anyone in a North American experience. Um, again, coming from either an atheist background or a Christian background or whatever it ends up being, it doesn't seem to um, necessarily affect like this world that they're stepping into in terms of that it's not a it's not a different experience. It's not yeah. um, it's not so different. There are different aspects, but it's not so different. It's like there's these different common um, commonly reported things that overlap. Yeah, and I think probably the biggest one that I've seen. Um is just love, right? It's like all of them, it always comes down to love. And it's almost like if you could create love as, as, a, as a substance, it's like you're literally walking into it is kind of the way that they seem to describe that. And yeah, I don't know, it's interesting. I just had this thought. I've, um, one, I can't, I am so grateful to be where I am with my knowledge of the afterlife because of this channel and now films like yours is when you actually, and in your film, you know, that there was a lady, and I won't give too much away there either that had, had a pretty solid foundation because of her experience. But then regardless, we all experience loss. Right. And, yeah. and how you deal with that, it definitely helps if you feel like someday you're going to be with your loved one again. Um, and I, yeah. I lost my mom earlier this earlier this year. And I just, um, I was an only child. It was just the two of us growing up and she's just so important mm. to me and just knowing more than ever because of all of this information and where I am that, that like I, I, I get to be with my mom again. It's, it's, it's beautiful. Um, yeah. but what popped into my head when we were talking about that and, and just the love side of it, what's interesting, I would say probably the most spiritual experience I've ever had in my life. Nothing nothing compares, um, not going to church, not even when I feel like I've, I've literally felt my mom's presence since she's passed. Um, the day that I brought my firstborn son home to our house, we sat in, down and I held him and I can't, I just, I think it's the closest I've felt to the way that they talk about this kind of love. It was just like, yeah, what is this? You know, I hear about, you know, people going and going to the top of a, a mountain and, and, and communing with a guru and getting into this deeper side. For me, I don't know what happened, but that uh, becoming a father and seeing this brand new soul and soul in a physical body and starting his journey yeah. on earth, it just did something. And um, I'll never forget that. That's so cool. Yeah, I had the same same experience with uh, both both my boys. Um, I have 11 year old and, and a now six year old. He just turned six, but I remember when my firstborn uh, son was was born. It was it was actually the moment when I when I first saw him. Yeah. Um, I had that same sensation, but it was, and it's like the way I would describe it is like 
my heart just doubled and I didn't know yeah. that it had more capacity for love. It's just, it just doesn't. Cause I'm like, I love my wife and, and I, you know, it's like, I'm good, but my heart just immediately doubled. It just doubled. Yeah. And I just all of a sudden had more capacity for love. And it was just this overwhelming experience. You know, what's crazy though, is that we, we talked to this lady um, out in, in Israel who had this daily experience. She's in kind of a small part in the montage in the film she talks about this love that she felt um, as being, she says, if, if she was trying to describe it and, you know, I would, we would say that, you know, like seeing, you, you know, the, the birth of your child um, and, and there's that love that you feel as a parent, she would say the love that all mothers have had for their kids since the beginning of time, all human history, if you could take that love all of it and put and distill it down into uh, into a bottle essentially and then drink that she says it would be it would pale in comparison to the love that she experienced in this place and I'm just like <laughs> that's, that's wild <laughs> that's profound yeah it's profound yeah. yeah like so it's like you know we're experiencing and, and we're experiencing like these amazing moments here on, on earth so I can't even imagine we just can't comprehend no. the um, the the love that's experienced there and it's unconditional it's a uh, that's what they that's what they'll they'll say it's this unconditional love yeah um yeah it's amazing yeah it's beautiful and and that that element of it too just like knowing when you do end up losing someone or you're close there yourself just knowing that literally that that's what is ahead of you um if you can if you can go and, and experience some of these stories and just kind of bring some of that inside of you and, and question. And I, I love that too. There was a gentleman in your film that kept saying like, be skeptical, like think about it, decide yeah. for yourself. And, and yeah, we all have to do that. Um, but I, I truly feel like there's a reason why this day and age, um, everything is increasing at a rapid rate. And I think that includes evil. And I, I don't think right. that it's any coincidence that at the same time evil and confusion is increasing, that you have these stories uh, coming out more and the technology to share them. Uh, and yeah. you've, you've been able to do that in a, in a major way with this feature film. I'm totally with you there. I always wondered about the timing of it, you know, and even, I mean, I've been working at this for about just a little bit over six years yeah. now, and <laughs> it's a long journey. Yeah. But I, and, and during that journey, you know, so many ups and downs, a lot of downs, uh, a lot of times I would say like in where I'm in this valley that I feel like, you know, it's like, is it, is this even worth it? But uh, always questioning, it's like, what, why this timing? Like why? I feel compelled to tell this film. I felt it's like this transformed my life and I want to share that with others. But I was always curious about the timing. And it's like, even when it got finished and it, and it goes out through Angel Studios was just the most interesting thing. I was like, I mean, I don't know. And we couldn't, none of us could plan for even just like the amount of theaters that it goes out to. Um, we don't all have control over that. Angel Studios is, you know, an amazing team and they've done, you know, amazing work at getting it to theaters but not all of us have control over the amount of theaters that it goes out to. It's yeah. unusual for a documentary to go to theaters in general, yep. but then it actually goes out to over 2,700 theaters. Like why now? Why that many? Th and it was just so specific, the timing. You know, Taylor Swift had announced uh, her film coming to theaters the same month. A lot of other films left um, the space worrying that they don't want to compete with with Taylor Swift. And, and so because of that, our little independent documentary um, you know, it, there's space for it. And, and so then we go to that many screens. And so that many more people are, are hearing these stories and are, and are affected by it. And, and I think that's just, that's just God's timing. Totally. Yeah. I could totally see that. All right. Well, thanks again, Steven. I got to say for your first feature, goodness gracious, man. Well done. So <laughs> thanks yeah, so much. it's very cool. Yeah. Thanks for watching it. Thanks for having me on the program.